Hello and welcome back to the formatc.com tutorials. Uh, in this series of tutorials what we're doing is we are working on building up the infrastructure so that we can build a small little web application. Our web application is basically going to just kind of log some movies and maybe locations of those movies, descriptions, just basically a small little database application that will allow us to kind of track some store-bought movies that we may have or, or whatnot. Um, we're going to be using Laravel as the back-end PHP framework and we're going to be later on getting into some Angular for the front-end framework. Um, if you have not watched the first part of this video, the first part uh, of the tutorial series was basically uh, going through and setting up a Apache web server. So what we did was we configured Apache with PHP and MySQL and got the server up and to a uh, running state. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to dive right in and we're going to we're going to start off right where we left off yesterday. So at this point, you know, nothing has changed from the um, status of the web server from the first tutorial video. Um, what we're going to do in this particular video is we're going to go ahead and we're going to set up Samba real quick. So what Samba is, is basically Samba is an application that runs on a Linux server that allows a client computer such as your Windows or your Mac or your uh, Windows computer to be able to um, get to directories that are sitting on that on that uh, web server. Um, typically speaking, once we get uh, once we get going with the development cycle and we start developing and coding, um, all we're going to do is we're just going to attach to a directory that's sitting on that server, and we're not going to really interact with the server all that much directly. So we need to be able to definitely um, get to that uh, that directory where our project is going to be sitting on the web server from our desktop computer. So um, this is a pretty pretty straightforward, pretty quick uh, little uh, run through to set up the Samba. Um, all we're going to do is uh, start off by obviously logging into our web server that we were that we had built yesterday, and let's see. Remember the password. There we go. Okay, and so what we're going to do is we're just going to dive right in here and. Um, all we need to do in, to install Samba, it's actually pretty, pretty simple. Um, all we need to do is first actually install the, the daemon from our package repository, which was yum, as we talked about yesterday. So um, all we're going to do is just do a yum-y install, and all we need is Samba4 and Samba4 client. And what that's going to do is that's just going to basically grab um, everything that we need to run Samba and attach with the Samba client. And we'll go through this little little rundown real quick. And we are installing the Samba for client, Samba for libs. And I actually saw a little error message. I may have spelled Samba incorrectly. So let me let me just make sure. And I did. Put an extra A in there, so let's make sure that we get that installed. Okay, and now I'm just going to check to make sure that my binaries are installed correctly. I'm going to do that just by typing in an RPM QA. I'm going to pipe that through grep samba, and that should give me a listing. So now we'll see that we've got the samba client, um, samba com common, the libs, and the actual uh, samba daemon itself all installed on the server. So the next thing that we need to do now is uh, just go ahead and create the configuration. Um, the configuration files for Samba live in uh, Etsy Samba, which is automatically created for you at the time of installation of Samba. And if we take a look in this directory, um, all we're going to see is just an LMS host file, which we're not going to actually even touch, and a Samba.conf uh, or a Samba.config file. Um, I'm going to look at that Samba.config file real quick. And what we'll notice here is that we've got quite a bit of uh, stuff in the Samba config file. There's a lot of uh, documentation, which is actually a really good thing to have um, in a configuration file. However, it does make it kind of messy and a little bit cumbersome, I find, um, on some occasions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that file to make. I'm going to just basically make a backup of it. So I'm going to do. I'm going to do that with the copy command. So I'm going to do cp um, smb dot config to smb dot configure dot conf. Uh, dot back and now again I'm gonna do a directory listing and what we'll notice is now that we've got a backup of that uh, config file okay and so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna edit the samba.comp file now that we've made a backup of it and let's go ahead and open that guy up and so now um, I guess real quick I want to know how many lines of, of uh, documentation or how many lines are uh, exist in this config file um, just cause I'm gonna go ahead and wipe everything out so I'm gonna give you a quick little tip here for uh, VIM 
or Vim or VI. <laughs> um, basically, if we need to just quickly get to the very bottom of the file, instead of sitting here and hitting the down arrow and just, you know, going through uh, 500, 1,000 different lines of code, if we hold our shift button and hit G twice, um, that'll actually bring us to the very bottom of the file. And so we've, we've got this little uh, indicator down here at the bottom, kind of shows us how many lines of, uh, uh, of code or of documentation or whatever are in, the, in this particular file. Um, so th we have we 315 different lines. Um, we're going to wipe all of those out. So I'm just going to, to get back quickly to the very top of the file, I'm just going to hit my G button twice again, and that's going to bring me up to the top of the file. And I saw I had 315 lines, so I'm just going to type in 400, so 400, and then DD, and that's going to wipe out the entire file um, from, the, from the, the point where I was at, which is at the top. So now I'm just going to hit my I button in order to be able to uh, insert into that file. And instead of sitting here typing out um, what we need for some, I'm just going to copy. I've kind of gotten that together a little bit beforehand here, and I'm just going to paste that in. So we'll just go over this real quick. That way you're not sitting here watching me um, type a bunch of stuff. So basically we just need a couple of different parameters for our global parameter. We're going to just kind of leave the, um, some of this stuff was default and it was set already in the samba.config file. Um, just things such as like the Samba uh, server version, log file location is going to be set to default. Um, we want to make sure our security is set to user. Um, our couple of things to note, I guess, right here, our guest user is going to be rnason. Now, the reason why the guest user is rnason for me is because my desktop computer actually has an rnason user. So when you go through and you uh, you type this into the samba.comp file, when you come to the guest user part or guest account part, you're going to want to type in your own username from your own client computer. So it doesn't matter if you're using Windows or Linux or a Mac. Um, you just need to make sure that you know who the name of the user is that you're logged into your desktop computer as. And that username is going to be exactly the same username that you have typed here in that guest account. Also, with the hosts allow directive, um, you'll notice that I've got 10.0.0.0 .0 .0 with a 255000 mask. And that is simply just because, again, that, that conforms to my uh, network setup here um, at, at my house. So... Uh, like we talked about uh, during part one, typically what you're going to have is you're going to have like a cable modem or you're going to have like a, a Linksys or a Netgear uh, router um, that's basically connecting, you, you know, your your network to, to the Internet. And just like we changed the when we, we assigned the IP address to the web server yesterday, we probably gave it something maybe like a 192.168.0.0. We want to make sure that we basically are um, putting in the exact same subnet into this this host allowed. So let's give you an example. Let's say that your computer, your client computer, uh, is sitting on a, uh, an IP of 192.168.0. Let's say 15. Um, your router, your your uh, or your cable modem um, is assigned a which is also the gateway, which is assigned an IP address of 192.168.0.1, um, and then your web server, as we set up yesterday, was 192.168.0.250. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to we want to want the entire 192.168.1.0 subnet to be able to access this uh, Samba instance. Um, so what you can type in is 192.168.0.0, and then slash your typical mask for for a Class C a, uh, address that's given to you by one of those devices is going to be 255.255.255.0. Um, other than that, all the other stuff is going to remain the same. So you're going to have your print cap and your op locks and your kernel op locks. This is just some some basic configuration stuff that Samba needs in order to be able to start up and, and run. The other two directives um, are going to be... Uh, directives that we've uh, also created. So th these directives are basically going to set up the shares on the on the web server that we're going to be able to connect to and mount to later on. So we've got our home directive and that just basically states like the location of the home directories. Um, so we just type in a comment and then home directories there and the path is going to be slash home. Um, we're going to make it public. Guests can get to it. It is not read only. Um, it is browsable. Our create mask and our directory mask are going to be set to 777, which basically means owner, group, and everyone is uh, uh, can write to that. Um, we're not going to need to print from that directory, so we're just going to say no to printing, and op locks is going to be set to yes. 
Also, we're going to set up the public directive, and that's going to define the location of our web service, our, our, our web uh, parent uh, root directory. So um, I'm just going to put in there uh, for the comment, the public www directory. The path is going to be our Apache path, which is slash var slash www slash HTML. And we're going to have basically the same exact directives being public yes, guest yes. It's not read only. Writable is yes. Same thing with the masks, um, etc. So pretty simple setup. Uh, this is not taking into account any sort of security. Uh, this is going to allow any computer that is on your local subnet to be able to connect to these shares. Um, I mean, again, like in a typical like environment, you may want to, you know, if this is on a public web server, for instance, um, you know, it's not going to be on a public web server, but if it's on a, a computer or a web server that's sitting inside of your uh, network, you may want to lock it down a little bit tighter. Um, there's plenty of documentation on, on the uh, web about uh, locking down and securing Samba. Uh, it's just kind of outside of the scope of this tutorial. Again, I'm just kind of just trying to get it set up so that it works and we're not really we're not really focusing on security because we are assuming that this is just a development environment that you're going to be accessing. So um, that all being said, let's go ahead and close this file. Now we need to do two more things real quick, uh, three more things real quick. The first thing is that we need to actually create a user. So inside of this samba.comp file, we defined a user of rnason, which is also the uh, user that I have locally here on my client Mac computer. Um, so I'll make sure that those match up. I'm going to need that user also in my web server. So I'm just going to do, I'm going to add that user by typing in user add and then rnason. And that's it. And that's going to create the user uh, on the local file system um, on the web server. And I can check that if I want to by doing uh, a cat slash Etsy slash password which is the file that contains a list of all your uh, usernames. And you'll notice that if I look in here now at the very bottom, the last entry is the rnason user. So that, that user has now been created and, and exists on the web server that we created. And oops. And then what I'm going to do is I need to add that. So we basically have added the user to the uh, operating system, but now we need to make Samba aware of that operating system user. So um, all we're going to do to do that is type in Samba password, and then we're going to type in dash A for append. So it's just going to append a new user to the existing file, and then we're going to type in rnason. And it's going to ask me for a password here, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a password. Okay, and it'll say that the new user has been added. Now, one more thing that we want to do, oops, let's see, one more thing that we want to do real quick is just we want to make sure that this web server can actually resolve itself um, so it knows who it is. And so how, how we're going to accomplish that is um, the same exact little trick that we did yesterday on the client uh, computers. What we're going to do is we're going to local, we're going to modify the local slash Etsy slash host file here on this web server. And all we're going to do is on this assignment for 127.0.0.1, which is the local loopback of the server, we're just going to add a couple of extra names here, such as web demo, my movie db, my movie db dot local. And that should suffice. So we're going to go ahead and save that file. And now all we need to do is just start the Samba service. So we're going to do that the same way that we did with Apache and uh, my, and uh, uh, all the other stuff that we've set up so far. And that's just going to be a service SMB start. And hopefully we, yep. And so as long as we have a good configuration file, um, Samba should start up correctly. And the last thing that we're going to do here is we're going to, again, do a check config for SMB on. And again, that's that's just going to make it so that whenever the web server is rebooted, if the web server is rebooted, that Samba, the Samba daemon will come up um, when the server boots. And so that's uh, just about it as far as setting up Samba. Um, so now what we need to do is actually test it out. So I'm going to hit my quick key of command K here. Um, and what that's going to do is open up a connect to server window. And I'm going to show you how to do this on Windows as well, just to so that we have a uh, have it clearly de de defined. Um, so in my connect to server on my Mac here, I'm just going to type in smb colon slash slash in the IP address of the server. And I'm going to hit connect. And let's see, we get a prompt, so that's good. So I'm going to go ahead and just try to connect as guest and see if that'll let me go through. And so now it's asking me what volume I want to mount. I've got my home and my public. 
Um, I have nothing in home, but we do have something in the public directory. So let's go ahead and open that and, and we're mounted. So now we'll actually see that I've got that php.info file that we created yesterday. Um, and I'm able to uh, access that uh, right through my local uh, file system interface here. And so now uh, just to real quick replicate the exact same thing on a Windows uh, machine. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to kind of move over here to a to a Windows server real quick. Maybe or a little slow. OK, so now we've got our Windows computer up and running here. Um, I apologize. I don't have a version of Windows uh, 7 or Windows 8 or, or one of the newer client OSs. Um, I don't typically use Windows in my house. However, uh, we do have a Windows Server 2003 server here, and the process is going to be the same regardless of what version of Windows you're running. The only difference might be that, you know, your menus are going to look a little bit different potentially and um, uh, maybe a little bit more snazzy in some of the newer versions. Um, so in order to uh, attach to the remote Samba share that we've set up now um, on a Windows server or a Windows computer client, client computer, all we need to do is uh, go to start and then run. And then what we're going to just do is type in um, backslash backslash and then the IP address, which is uh, of the uh, Samba server the, or the uh, web server that we've created. And so in my case, uh, that will be 172.16.79.250. And I'm going to hit enter and you'll see that it'll pop right up. And so now I have access to both the home and the public folders that I set up uh, in the Samba definition when we set up the Samba piece of the uh, web server. And so I'm going to go in here to... Um, to my public drive and you'll see that I've got that uh, PHP info.php file that we created during the first tutorial to check the PHP information. So um, this is all good and it's uh, it's working. Um, now another little trick that you can do with Windows is if you go to my computer and you go to tools and then map network drives we have the ability to be able to basically tell Windows that you want to take that remote location which is your web server and you want to assign a, a drive letter and be able to access it just like you would an attached uh, storage drive. So what we're going to do is um, all you, you just pick the drive letter that you would like to, to have mapped to the remote location and then we're going to type in exactly the same thing that we used before here which is the um, backslash backslash 172.16.79.250 in my case. And then I'm going to attach directly to that public uh, share. And so you can also click on this uh, reconnect at login. And what that'll do is that um, when you log out of your, your client computer and then log back in, it will automatically attempt to attach the uh, drive letter that we're signed up or we're setting up here to the remote location, um, which is the Samba server. So after we do that, you see that under network drives, um, that drive shows up. And if I click on that, I am in my Z drive and I have access to the PHP info.php file. And this, when you map a, a drive letter um, to the operating system, it actually extends to all uh, uh, or, or to the entirety of the operating system right down to the command line. So if you open up a command prompt now and you type in um, Z dollar sign, that'll actually switch us to the Z drive uh, on the computer. And if I do a directory listing on this, you'll see that I uh, have access through the command line to that PHP info .php file. So that basically wraps up the Samba piece of this a video. And uh, I was going to go ahead and um, go through the Laravel installation. But I think what I'm going to do here is uh, we're going to we're going to bump that to the next video. And uh, that way we can kind of keep things a little bit more uh, compartmentalized. And I think that's what we want to do moving forward is just kind of keep the focus of the videos onto one specific topic. So um, this video would have been uh, would, was obviously all of the Samba stuff. And the next video will be just solely um, the installation and, and setup of Laravel, the, the PHP MVC framework that we're going to use. And we will do the same thing for like, you know, a Twitter bootstrap and for the authentication uh, mechanism when we start writing code and, and um, all that. And that'll just kind of keep things a little bit more organized and a little easier to get around in. So um, that being said, uh, thanks, for, thanks for watching. And uh, if you have uh, time, please check out my blog at www.formatc.com. Uh, there you will find full text do, uh, articles pertaining to the videos. Um, so all of the commands that we've used to set up the, the, the servers and set up various pieces of the application as we go through moving through the development process, as well as configuration examples and code examples and all that stuff can be found right there at, that, at my blog. So um, check that out if you get a chance. Um, and uh, other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.